Hello again, dear viewers. You know what it is and what it does. It being the Anomatron 6000, our hyper-advanced simulation computer. It also being one of today's combatants, the horrifying creature created by Stephen King in his 1986 novel, the most popular form of this shape-shifting, fear-eating monster being Pennywise, the Dancing Clown. And we thought, what if Pennywise met the SCP Foundation's resident lover of fear, SCP-2006, also known as Too Spooky? Well, let's turn on the device and find out. It was the summer of 1989, and for all across the United States, it was the time of freedom, of childhood wonder, splashing through creeks, searching for frogs, flying kites, and riding their bikes as fast and as far as they could before it was time to be home for dinner. At the SCP Foundation, however, there was no summer break, no lazy days lounging by the pool, no trips to the corner ice cream shop to sample every flavor before finally picking one, and certainly no trips to the beach. He never thought he'd say this, but Agent Adams was beginning to miss dumping sand out of his shoes at the end of a long day, tending to the sunburn he always seemed to get. Instead, he was working, sitting on board a Foundation-owned helicopter, staring down at the beautiful sun-soaked landscape below, and wishing he too could be having a little bit of summer fun. But there was no time to dwell on the past, no day for daydreams. He needed to bring his attention back to the task at hand, transporting this anomaly to its new containment site. It was hard to keep himself focused, he had to admit. There wasn't much company on board. It was just him, the pilot, the shy, quiet Agent Paul, and SCP-2006. Adams didn't know too much about the entity, he had to admit. He hadn't seen too much of it, only crossed paths with it once or twice. Currently, it was contained in a miniature, portable version of its airtight containment cell. The little he had seen of the creature had been confusing and, to be honest, a little bit ridiculous. It was hairy, sort of like a gorilla, but more like a man in a cheap gorilla Halloween costume, and wore an old-school space helmet on its head, complete with two goofy antenna jutting out of the top. He had laughed out loud when he first saw it, but a supervisor had reprimanded him harshly and promised that if he was caught laughing at SCP-2006 again, he would be reassigned to a far more dangerous anomaly. He didn't want to screw around with either SCP-682 or SCP-106, so he made sure to stifle his urge to giggle the next time he saw the absurd creature. Now, sitting on the helicopter, listening to the whirring of the blades and wishing he had thought to bring a book, he couldn't help but ponder the nature of the entity he was helping transport. So, what's this thing's deal? He asked Agent Paul, who had been silently working on a newspaper crossword puzzle he had brought with him. What, SCP-2006? Yeah, what's up with it? It's kind of, you know, silly, right? Agent Paul's eyes widened and put a finger to his lips. Shh, you can't say stuff like that. Agent Adams held up his hands in surprise. Whoa, buddy, sorry to offend. No, no, no. Agent Paul shook his head. You don't get it. We need to act like this thing is terrifying, got it? He lowered his voice. I know it's kind of funny. When I first saw that thing, it transformed into a killer tomato from an old movie, for crying out loud, but the higher-ups don't want it to figure out what actually scares people. So we have to play along. Like when a little kid jumps out from behind a chair in a monster mask and you give them a big fake scream so they can feel powerful. It's like that, only the fate of humanity rests in the balance. Agent Adams couldn't help himself at that comment. <laughs> Seriously? How does protecting this thing's ego affect the fate of humanity? Agent Paul rolled his eyes so hard it looked like he might hurt himself. Because, Adams, this is a creature whose only goal in the world, its favorite thing to do, its entire life's purpose is to scare human beings. That's all it wants. Right now, it's not that great at it because its idea of what's scary is based on a bunch of horrible drive-in horror movies from the 50s. But if it ever figured out the kind of stuff that really scares people, I mean, really, truly, pee your pants level scares people, who knows what it could do? Imagine if it, say, it got a look at SCP-173 or even a more recent horror movie, like what if this thing saw a nightmare on Elm Street and decided to start cutting people up with Freddy Krueger hands? Seriously, you need to learn to think before you speak. Agent Adams nodded thoughtfully, taking in the surprising outburst from such a usually quiet guy. Okay, dang, I had no idea. Maybe you should pay more attention during briefings, Agent Paul snarked. Adams was just about to retort when the helicopter suddenly veered to the left with a lurch, 
There was a grinding sound, metal on metal, and it quickly became apparent that something was wrong with the helicopter. Something's wrong, I've never seen anything like this before. The pilot shouted from his position at the controls. This thing's going down, and we're gonna have to jump if we don't want to go down with it. What about SCP-2006? Agent Paul panicked. Unless it has a parachute, we'll have to leave it to fend for itself. The pilot was already suiting up with his own emergency parachute, making his way to the door of the helicopter. I suggest you get moving if you don't feel like exploding today. That was all Agent Adams needed to shock him out of his temporary crisis-induced paralysis. He grabbed the last two parachutes on board, tossed one to the very pale, extremely sweaty Agent Paul, and prepared to make the jump to what would hopefully be safety. He batted the side of SCP-2006's mobile containment unit half-heartedly. Sorry, buddy was all he could think to say before he took a deep breath, tried not to throw up, and followed the pilot diving out of the helicopter toward the ground below. He heard Agent Paul jump out right behind him, and soon the only sound he could hear was the roaring of the wind in his ears as his fingers fumbled with the ripcord on his harness. He pulled it, and the parachute ballooned out, doing its job in carrying him slowly down to Earth. He landed with a grunt, feeling around for any broken bones. Thankfully, he had landed smoothly. A few moments later, Agent Paul landed a great deal less smoothly, but still very much in one piece. The pilot was already dusting himself off several feet away from the two men. In the distance, they could hear the booming sound of the helicopter crashing, and Agent Adams winced. <sighs> Poor guy. Poor us, Agent Paul added. Where are we, anyway? Somewhere in Maine, the pilot shrugged. Small town nearby from the looks of it. He pointed toward the nearby sign, and the other two men sighed with relief. Civilization. Somewhere they could get cleaned up, get a bite to eat, and apologetically call for backup. Nice, Agent Adams grinned. Paul, you're from this part of the country, you know this town? Derry? Agent Paul shook his head. Nope, never even heard of it. Agent Adams shrugged, and he, Agent Paul, and the pilot slowly made their way into the unassuming little town of Derry, Maine. It was lovely, idyllic even. Such a picture of small-town bliss that they didn't even notice just how many missing posters were stapled to the telephone poles, the wide eyes of lost children seeming to watch them as they passed. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, in the middle of the marshy barrens where so many children had gone missing that summer, and the summer 27 years before it, a figure was climbing out of the smoldering wreckage of the helicopter. It was big and furry with massive paws and that silly metal helmet on top of its head. SCP-2006 had survived and was taking its first free steps in decades. It looked around at the wilderness, the trees, the rocks, the running water, and the entrance to the town's sewers. It barely understood any of what it was seeing, but it knew that it was in a brand new place, one that would hopefully be filled with brand new people to scare. Oh, how exciting to think about seeing new faces Eyes wide with dread, mouths open in screams. The creature was in its favorite, most fearsome form, too. The mighty and terrible Roman from the 1953 classic Robot Monster. None could behold this shape without collapsing in terror. SCP-2006 clapped its hands together delightedly, laughing to itself. It had been nervous when the helicopter started to fall out of the sky, but now it seemed that this was the best thing that could have possibly happened. With no one in the immediate vicinity to frighten, 2006 decided to wander off through the woods in search of fresh victims. After all, now that it was free from that awful box, there was plenty of time to look and an endless amount of scares to be given. The creature ambled down the road past a public park, a vintage diner, and rows and rows of little houses. A woman passed, walking her dog. SCP-2006 roared at her, expanding its arms wide and standing up on its tiptoe to appear as large as possible. Fear me, for I am Roman! That's nice, dear. The lady passively remarked, stopping to let her dog sniff 2006's leg. It lifted its own leg and urinated on the creature's fur. How dare you! I am monstrous! Quake with fear! 2006 bellowed, but the lady only chuckled, shook her head, and continued on her way. Puzzled, the creature continued to walk along the road, looking for more victims to terrorize and strike fear into their fragile hearts. Up ahead, a group of little children playing with a soccer ball. Perfect. 2006 crouched low to the ground and snuck up on the group, hiding behind a bush before popping out with a wild yell, Tremble before the mighty Roman! It shouted. One child screamed, startled, but his friends immediately began to tease him. Calm down, you big baby, it's just a guy in a suit. One of his friends thumped him with the soccer ball. 
Another boy, who was eating a cherry popsicle, laughed loudly at the sight of the entity. Nice costume, loser! He blew a raspberry and threw the popsicle at 2006's head, sugary frozen slurry dripping down its fur. Why aren't you afraid? SCP-2006 demanded, unable to grasp how it lost its scaring ability so quickly. Perhaps something had gone wrong during the crash, or perhaps this town was just filled with unusually brave people. Whatever it was, 2006 wanted to figure out the answer, and fast. After all, who was SCP-2006 if it wasn't scary? Because we're not scared of some nerd in a Chewbacca suit barf bag. The kid with the soccer ball threw it at 2006 who caught it, its claws puncturing the ball and flattening it. Hey, this doofus broke our ball! Kick his butt! It is you who should be concerned with your butts! SCP-2006 retorted, changing its face to the shape of a werewolf from a classic black and white film. It bared its teeth, rubbery tongue lolling out of its mouth, glassy eyes staring in two different directions. Whoa, how'd you do that? The angry boy lowered his fists, gaping in awe. Never mind, that was kinda cool. Bummer about the ball, though, the first boy sighed. Fed up with all this confusion, SCP-2006 dropped the deflated ball to the ground, then promptly turned and walked in the opposite direction. Hey, where's he going? The kid demanded, but the anomaly did not respond. One boy began bragging about his new collection of baseball cards, and their attention was soon pulled away from the strange being that they believed to be a person in a monster costume. Then, as SCP-2006 walked, it heard the sound it had been waiting to hear all day. Screams. Glorious screams of absolute terror. The purest sound of fear. It sounded like a child shrieking at the top of their lungs in the face of something truly horrifying. Where could that wonderful noise be coming from? And why hadn't SCP-2006 been the one to inspire it? The anomaly was desperate to get to the bottom of things. It followed the sound searching for its source, but just as the sound grew louder and the creature got closer, it cut off all of a sudden, as if swallowed up by something all-encompassing. Hello? SCP-2006 called out in vain. Where did you go? Come back so that I can scare you! Please! I, I am Roman! Hiya there, Roman! A voice piped up from behind the entity. It spun around, looking for whoever just spoke. Hello? Who is it? SCP-2006 could not see anyone. Only the suburban street, the houses, the empty yards. Down here, the voice called. This way. The voice was coming from a storm drain down in the darkness below. SCP-2006 could barely make out a pair of eyes, a white painted face, a red nose, and a pair of bright red lips. Boo! SCP-2006 shouted at the person in the storm drain. It burst into a fit of giggles. <laughs> oh, that was very good. What's your name? The clown asked. I am Roman, the mighty, the fearsome, SCP-2006 replied. Nice to meet ya. I'm Pennywise, the dancing clown. The clown grinned, showing a mouth full of sharp teeth. Come a little closer, why don't ya? Maybe we could be friends. SCP-2006 was perplexed, but approached just the same. The clown took a deep breath, catching a whiff of the entity's unfamiliar scent, and it frowned. What are you? Pennywise asked, the friendly affection gone from his voice and face. You don't smell right to me. Not like anything I've ever smelled. I told you. Are you scared? 2006 replied. Pennywise laughed at this, a wild, unhinged cackle. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. Are you scared? The clown stared at 2006, its wide orange eyes glinting in the light. Of course not. I'm much scarier than you are. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> You're funny, the clown exclaimed. Very funny. Why don't you come down here with me? Want to float? We all do, down here. I'm not funny, SCP-2006 pouted. I'm scary. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, the clown waved the words away. Don't you want to come over here? We could be friends. Cautiously, the anomaly approached the storm drain, leaning down to get a better look at the strange clown. Suddenly, the clown's hand shot out, grabbed hold of SCP-2006's arm. The clown's mouth stretched open wide, revealing rows upon rows of teeth and a seemingly impossible stretch of darkness inside of its jaws. Pennywise bit down on the anomaly's arm, pulling it into the storm drain, trying to swallow it whole like a snake swallows its prey. But as it tried to devour SCP-2006, it began to choke, 
its body rejecting the entity, and it spat the furry anomaly back out. SCP-2006 landed in the water inside of the sewer with a wet plop, as Pennywise rubbed at its jaw thoughtfully. Hmm, you really are strange. The clown frowned. I told you before, I'm scary. I'm scary, SCP-2006 insisted. Sure you are, Pennywise grimaced. Is that the shape you use to scare people? SCP-2006 nodded. Among others, this is my most successful, though. Pennywise shook its head. I know a thing or two about fear. It's what I use to season my meat. Fear is what I do. And you? Oh, you've got a lot to learn about fear. Would you show me how to be m more scary? SCP-2006 asked. Pennywise laughed again, a hacking, coughing sound. <laughs> you know what? I will. The more frightened children in this town, the better. As long as you understand, this is my turf. SCP-2006 nodded furiously. I, I understand. Pennywise beckoned the entity over and motioned for it to sit down. Fear is personal. Everyone is afraid of something different, and there is a unique way to tap into each person's deepest fears. Normally, I look like this, like Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Clowns are funny. Children like clowns, but they're also terrified of clowns. Pennywise did a little jig, laughing wildly. <laughs> it makes them taste so sweet when they meet me like this and think I'm a friend, and then I show them what I truly am. The clown bared its teeth. Humans aren't scared of clowns, SCP-2006 shook its head. In my experience, they only think clowns are funny. They laugh at them. Now this is scary. SCP-2006 concentrated and changed its shape. It was a giant rabbit from the film Night of the Lepus. This strikes terror into their hearts. No, it doesn't. Pennywise rolled its eyes. Listen to me. Suppose a child has a fear of birds. Maybe he watched a movie about a giant pterodactyl. Maybe he was attacked by a bird as a baby. Maybe it was both. You could try something like this. Pennywise shifted forms then, changing from a clown to a giant bird, with sharp talons, a massive wingspan, a pointed beak, and wild eyes. Or say the child is afraid to cross a stream because he's afraid of piranhas. The shape of Pennywise changed again as piranhas plopped into the water below, swimming around in a ravenous swarm. So, being scary is about animals? SCP-2006 cocked its head to the side, confused. Pennywise resumed its clown form, growing increasingly frustrated. No, it's... it's about a person's darkest thoughts. The images that come to them while they lie in bed and struggle to fall asleep. Say there's a little boy who lives in fear of sickness. His mother planted the fear in his head, you see. All day long, he imagines little bacteria crawling across his skin. Infections waiting to slip inside and rot him from the inside out. To him, I would look like this. Pennywise changed into the shape of a leper, a man covered with sores and limbs about to drop off with a hacking, diseased cough. Then, whoosh, it was a clown again. Or say, there's a girl who fears one person more than anyone else in the whole world. Her father, a man who was once kind to her, maybe, but loss, anger, and drink have turned him wrong. Made anger curdle into violence inside his heart. To her, I would only need to look like him to say all the things she's afraid he thinks. Pennywise looked at SCP-2006. Do you understand now? I think so, the anomaly chirped. So I should try something like this. It transformed into something large, smooth, and slimy. It was one of the frogs from the 1972 film, Frogs. This will bring any person to their knees with fright. No! Pennywise bellowed. No, 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 no! You don't get it! So many things are scary. Spiders being abandoned by your friends, being unloved, being buried alive, a man with no head, a missing poster for someone who isn't missing it, but you? You're not scary! You're not scary at all! SCP-2006 huffed. Even when I do this? It turned into the shape of a fluffy alien with glowing red eyes and decidedly fake-looking papier-mâché arms. Pennywise the Dancing Clown sat down on the ground, resting his head in his hands with a long, exhausted sigh. 
<sighs> Listen, kid. I thought this would be fun, but I'm so tired. You're not scary. I can't eat you. What am I supposed to do with you? I've got a good thing going here, and I have for a very, very long time. You being here? It's messing things up. Just get out of my town. You're embarrassing me. Go on, get out of Derry. Find some other town to scare. This one's full. Well, you didn't have to be so rude about it. SCP-2006 huffed, but it listened just the same. It left Derry, Maine behind, walking off down the open road, just in time for an unmarked van from the SCP Foundation to pull up beside it and open the door. Roman, called out Agent Paul. You're very frightening, and we almost didn't stop because you frightened us so much, but do you, do you need a ride? In exchange for promising not to tear us apart with your mighty claws, of course. Will you take me to more people I can scare? 2006 asked. Agent Paul hid his smile and beckoned the creature inside. <laughs> you got it, buddy. Now go check out SCP-2006-2 Spooky and 25 Most Frightening SCPs for more terrifying journeys into the world of the SCP Foundation.